It's officially my 10 year anniversary of becoming a doctor. And over the last 10 years, I've treated thousands of patients, but I've also trained many doctors on seeing thousands of patients. And I see the same themes coming up of young doctors repeating the same mistakes. So today I thought it would be cool to talk about the 10 most common mistakes I see young doctors make. Huge thanks to PrimeMed for sponsoring this video. Wanting to solve everything in one visit. It's very tempting to have a patient come in, especially one you don't know, and wanna be the person that solves everything that's bothering them. However, we have to be realistic and practical because we have time limitations, we have other patients we need to see, and sometimes it's just not feasible to transfer all the necessary information to one patient in one visit. Prime example, patient comes in for an annual physical and we make a diagnosis of diabetes for the very first time. They also have back pain. They also have foot pain. These are multiple problems that each require their individual assessments of the subjective, what's going on in the patient's life, objective, doing a proper physical exam with special tests as necessary, then putting in together an assessment, then a plan in place to not only diagnose, but also treat some of these conditions. In those moments, I have to constantly remind mind young doctors to say, don't try and tackle all of this in one visit. But also it's very difficult for one patient to get so much new information thrown at them at once. So many new lifestyle recommendations that they won't be able to keep all of the information in their minds, but also will likely make mistakes. But the most important part is setting that good through line of here's what to expect on this visit. Here's what to expect on the follow-up so that you have a good continuity of care. Placing an overemphasis on numbers, aka labs, and not the actual patient. So many times a resident will come into precept and say, oh, I'm getting routine labs and I'm checking a thyroid level. I have to ask, why are we checking a thyroid level? This is not a screening test. Screening tests are used on people who are not having symptoms so that we can intervene before a problem happens. But thyroid hormone testing isn't really a screening test. This is more of a diagnostic test when someone is having symptoms of what could be a thyroid disorder that then you would order to check if a thyroid condition exists. But so many times I see young doctors order a thyroid hormone test on a patient that's not having symptoms, the thyroid test comes up slightly off, the young doctor wants to treat this number, but they're not actually asking the patient if they feel unwell. If a patient feels great, and their thyroid hormone is slightly off, this does not mean that we should right away jump to giving them a medication. Not to mention when you're overly focused on numbers, you may not be paying enough attention to the person's mental health state. It's very easy to get really focused on making a diagnosis of numbers, giving medications for those numbers, and not actually seeing how your information's landing on the patient and how they're reacting to their new diagnosis. Forgetting that we have general guidance given to us and based off these general guidelines, we then apply them to individuals. Just because we're given a general guideline, an algorithm, if you will, of how to help many patients with a condition or how to prevent specific instances like heart attacks from happening in patients, doesn't mean that they'll always apply to the individual sitting in front of us. There are barriers certain people face, whether socioeconomical or mental health. There are personal choices that people make. Not everyone has to make the hyper optimal choice that you think is best for their health. Your goal as a doctor is to educate the patient on the benefits and harms and allow them to make the best decisions for themselves. Young doctors constantly forget that reassurance and education is a medical treatment. So many times uh, a resident will come in and talk about a patient's condition and explain that there's not much we can do. Most commonly comes to mind like an upper respiratory infection caused by a virus. Yeah, we can make a recommendation of staying well hydrated, getting sleep, perhaps some supportive care with some over-the-counter options or natural remedies for symptom control. But in reality, the treatment for most viruses outside of flu and COVID are symptomatic management and reassurance. And they think that they need to prescribe something for the patient in order for them to go home happy. That's not true. If you give a patient good reassurance, explaining why you're making the decision to not prescribe an antibiotic, treatments for the things that are bothering them from a symptom perspective, guidance on red flags of what to look out for, when to call 911 versus when to come back to the office. This is what is arming a patient to do best for their own health. This is medical treatment. 
Just because you're not prescribing something on a prescription pad or sending one electronically doesn't mean you're not helping the person. I actually talked about this in more detail recently when I was speaking at PriMed South, the primary care CME CE conference and expo in Florida who sponsored this video. I did a deep dive into how I make use of social media as a tool in my life as a practicing physician. I discussed that I did have initial skepticism about being labeled an influencer, but then my journey of creating content online opened up a world of opportunities to be a better doctor. I use inspiration from my real life patient encounters to come up with ideas for content just like this. Researching conditions for future videos allows me to expand my knowledge and be a better doctor for my patients. It's two completely different parts of my life that directly feed off of one another. I also shed light into my YouTube analytics so you can see what the behind the scenes numbers of this YouTube channel looks like and how more physicians can own the title of influencer. I'm really proud of the entire presentation and I was so excited to share it with the audience in Florida, but now also with you. You can actually watch my presentation in its entirety and not just for fun either. If you're a clinician, you can actually receive CME credit for it. That's right, Dr. Mike videos are officially accredited as education for clinicians. Well, not all of them, but this one is. I'm still working on getting my meme reviews to count for AP credit. I'm staying home today, I have mood poisoning. <laughs> Click the link in the description to get started below with a free account on PrimeMed and watch my presentation now. Not knowing why they're treating a condition. Young doctors usually think that they're treating strep to help someone feel better sooner, to prevent the infection from getting worse. The reality is we treat strep in those cases because we're trying to prevent rheumatic fever and other complications related to strep. But the reality is most people from a mild strep infection would get better on their own. If you don't know why you're giving a treatment, it's very difficult to properly discuss the harms and benefits with the patient. And that's ultimately the goal. Your goal as a doctor is not to bark orders at a patient, it's why you wanna recommend a specific treatment versus another, and then get the patient on board with saying that they actually agree with this plan. So if you think you're giving the medication for them to feel better sooner and that's not true, you're technically misguiding your patient. In fact, there's been some evidence showing when giving antibiotics for strep versus not, only reduces symptoms by about a day. So it's not even that big of a difference, but it's those complications we worry about. Young doctors frequently forget to check their own biases at the door. This is kind of a problem for all doctors, but I see in young doctors a lot when they're nervous to have difficult discussions with patients. For example, they'll be presenting about a case of a 25 year old that comes in for an annual physical. Then we'll talk about sexual history. They say they have one partner, they're in a monogamous relationship, and they talk about the tests that they're ordering for preventive health screenings. And I ask, what about STI testing, sexually transmitted infection screening? They say, well, I didn't ask about testing that. I said, why? They said, well, they're in a monogamous relationship. I'm like, so? Do, do we know if their partner is in a monogamous relationship? Do we know in the past before this partner, could they have had an infection that has been lingering? They say, oh, I don't know, but it's an uncomfortable question to ask. It totally can be if we make it uncomfortable. But if it, instead we make it part of our everyday practice to say, look, if you're sexually active, we still recommend doing STI screening testing, even if you have no symptoms, even if you're with one partner, and that's my recommendation. The patient can choose to not wanna do the, the testing, but the recommendation should still be made. And to say that you have no biases is just untrue. All humans have them. The idea is to be as aware of them as possible so that you could be as forthcoming as you can be with your patient. Over and under ordering labs. Sometimes I have residents come in and say, oh, I'm ordering that routine lab work that I told you about. I'm like, well, what's part of the routine lab work? And they're like, oh, I got a repeat CBC. This patient is 25 years old, they're young, they're healthy. There's no reason why we should be checking their CDC so often. It creates unnecessary harm for potential false positives. It creates a cost to the healthcare system. In fact, there's a whole Choosing Wisely campaign that has been put out that actually tells us when we shouldn't be ordering tests unnecessarily because they drive up costs and cause harm in many instances. At the same time, I see young doctors forgetting certain systemic conditions can impact different systems of the body and they get very pigeonholed on to what the diagnosis must be. For example, if a patient comes in 
with palpitations of the heart. They order all the correct tests of the heart. But how about checking thyroid levels to see if the patient's hyperthyroid? Because that could be contributing to a fast heart rate. Like that sort of connection is oftentimes missed because they're so micro-focused, they forget to zoom out and think about a holistic approach of treating the whole patient. Not taking leadership roles in healthcare. This has been one of the biggest changes within the field of healthcare as a whole. Whereas 30 years ago, doctors used to run medical centers, medical offices, they'd be in charge, they'd be in the C-suite, the executive suite. That has slowly shifted and doctors have left the leadership positions and went more into the labor field. This created a few problems. The people who are in charge have not really spent enough time being clinicians, being on the ground, seeing what's happening, interacting with patients. And as a result, the policies they end up instituting actually end up harming us as doctors or even patients themselves, usually in the way of good intentions leading to bad outcomes. So I encourage young doctors to take the initiative of getting involved. It doesn't mean you have to give up your role as a clinician. You could still see patients during part time of the week or the month and then use that other time to be a leader in the field, advocate for patients, advocate for doctors, and make radical change in the system that is so badly broken. Making that good old assumption of the physical exam. You know what happens when you assume, right? You make a donkey out of you and me. A classic example is patient is telling me about a, they have an ongoing wound that's healing. I'll ask the resident, how is the wound doing? They'll tell me everything the patient said, but they didn't actually examine the wound themselves. I'm like, how do you know that it's getting better? We'll open it up and we see that there's signs of cellulitis happening and the patient needs antibiotics. Had we ignored that, the wound could have festered and that infection could have spread to the bone leading to an osteomyelitis, leading to an extended hospital stay with IV antibiotics. So we always have to visualize and do the physical exam. Oh my God, so often young doctors don't think about their own safety and health. And I know we're thinking safety as if like, making sure there's a clear exit to the room, all that is important because nurses, doctors, frontline doctors do experience a fair share of assault. It's really messed up, especially working in an emergency room setting. But something that we don't think about is the position with which you work. So many times I'll have young dentists come in and they have terrible back pains and issues with their joints because they're in uncomfortable positions for a very long period of time. Change your position, adjust the table, make yourself feel comfortable so that you're performing at your best. Also, if you're handling sharps around a patient, make sure their child is not running around out of control because they could easily nudge your elbow, leading to a needle stick situation where potentially some of the patient's blood ends up inside of you. That could be very problematic, leading to needing to take HIV prophylaxis medication that have potential side effects. When treating patients, yes, think about the patient first and foremost, but you also have to be comfortable during the time you're performing treatments and exams. Because ultimately, if you start failing, you're gonna end up failing the patient as well. Huge thanks to PrimeMed for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description to check out my presentation. And here's an amazing TikTok reaction video that will raise your blood pressure because you're laughing so hard. Click here, check it out, and as always, stay happy and healthy.